Uh, yeah, yeah, this whole front end looks like it's held on with zip ties. Uh, I... Ah! I'm really happy with how this came out. Front bumper's dragging, rear bumper's dragging. Don't get much better than that. What's up, it's Casey from Casey's Customs. I am building a low rider van. In this video, we cut out all the suspension and get it laying on the ground. We also finish the modern front end conversion. Let's get to work. Old Barn Garage told me not to buy this van because vans are a giant pain in the ass to work on. He was not wrong by any means, but we've had some fun. We got her. I got a low rider van. I mean, it just sounds good coming off the tongue. I can't wait to get this thing done, do a crazy paint job. Right now though, before we get started on this, there is a giveaway going on. I'm giving away my 1971 Ford F100 truck. V8 turbocharged short bed conversion. It's a ton of fun. I've been driving it daily the last month. The giveaway is live right now. Go to caseyscustoms.com. If you buy a sticker, you are entered to win. Not only will you win the truck, you win free shipping in the lower 48 of the USA. You can win, you can enter if you are outside of that region. Uh, the shipping is just up to you. I don't know how international shipping works at all. This is going to be the 10th giveaway we've done. I've had two international winners, one from Canada, one from Australia. Both of them got the shipping figured out and they got the cars. So really happy. Thank you everybody to the support on the channel. That's why we're even able to do these giveaways and really get some cool cars to people for relatively cheap. All you have to do is buy that sticker and you are entered to win. But as usual, I'm rambling. Let's get to work, start cutting this baby up. We got some parts for the van. I'm very, very happy. If you watched my other video on this van, I picked this thing up for 1500 bucks, and it wasn't running, wasn't driving, had a lot of issues. We basically got it running and driving. It has a temporary tank in it right now, which was a lot of our issues, so we have a new gas tank for it as well. But whenever it's aired all the way down, right now it's up a little bit. The front end is about two inches higher, and that's the only reason it's not dragging rocker. And the guy I got it from, he thought the front end was hitting the inner fenders. They're actually not. There's a lot of room in there where we can go down more. So what I did is I bought some, they're either three inch or 2.5 inch drop spindles for it. So I am gonna start getting those in and then we can see how low it is. Cause like I said, it's already up a little bit right now, but whenever it's down, this rear bumper is damn near on the ground. And then the rocker is on the ground in the back, but it's up in the front. And you know, it just doesn't look right. I want it to be all the way down. So let's start digging in this front end and see what we can come up with. Okay, I have to say this. This is not sponsored. I don't work with these guys at all. I'm usually not a big brand person. What I mean by that is, as far as car parts, I don't have any like loyalty. I'll just kind of buy whatever and whatever works, works. I've bought super cheap stuff. I've bought super expensive stuff. A lot of times it's all the same. I will say these drop spindles are from Bell Tech. I need to go check the uh, sticker now just in case I'm wrong. Yes, no, Bell Tech which obviously they're known. They're like probably the top brand when it comes to dropping stuff. These spindles went in perfectly. Sometimes your drop spindles, you know, your angles are a little wonky. You got to kind of beat around some stuff to make it work. This all bolted in easier than the stock one did. So that is really, really cool. Very happy to see that. So let's go get the other side on. Should go pretty smoothly. Hopefully I didn't just jinx it all, which I probably did. But yeah, let's get the other side put on. We'll drop her down and see how she looks. Let's do the other side. Yeah! All 
All right, I got the spindles all broke down. Here you can see how much the drop is. There's the stock one. There's the drop one. It's up about three inches. So we gotta put all this shit back together with the new spindles. And uh, we're definitely gonna have to re-bleed the brakes because all of my fluid went out. I probably could have left the calipers attached to the lines, but these lines don't look great. And I was thinking my rubber would rip if I had them hanging from it. So I have to do this because this needs to move because I have a customer car in. Now I know some of you are gonna say, Casey, I thought you didn't do customer cars. I don't, haven't done customer cars in a while, but every shop knows you have that one customer you can't say no to. <laughs> called me today and said hey let's do another car i said nah i'm really too busy he goes oh, i think you'll like this one i go okay haven't talked to him for a month i get a call about 15 minutes ago he said hey i brought you a car i said okay <laughs> so now we have a 55 chevy at the shop super nice we're gonna do ls3 airbag all disc brakes all the good stuff power steering and uh yeah that's how you end up with a customer car when you don't do customer cars you have a good customer you can't say no to this guy's gonna kill me. I'm gonna end up doing customer cars the rest of my life with him because we have another project after this one. <laughs> All right, let's get this van done so we can bring the car in. Shit! All right, spindles are on. Let's throw these tires back on and see how she looks. I'm excited. There's also a bunch of stuff I can cut on the bag mount itself, they kind of did a wonky bag mount. I can actually lose some uh, height in there, but I think we're all right either way. Well, let's find out. All right, let's see how she looks. Uh, the jacks out? Yes, they do. I definitely got to realign it because my wheels look like they're off now. Oh, I got a, I got a bag leaking up here. I can hear it. Certain we gotta cut the uh, inner fenders out. Oh yeah, she's handy. Still not all the way to the ground though. I'm trying to get my foot under it. What are we hitting? Oh my! <laughs> my steering is fucked. It's on the inner fenders. It is definitely on the inner fenders. She can come down a bunch. Cool. <laughs> It'll go down more once we trim the inner fenders, but that'll work for now so we can get the other car in. Cool. My steering looks like this. <laughs> oh, she's definitely on the inner fenders. The only problem with this is the inner fenders are like part of the structure of the front end, so it's gonna be a giant pain in the ass to cut them out. But we'll do it, we'll knock it out. I just gotta get it moved for now. So we got the spindles installed and I was looking up from the bottom to see what all I could cut out. And I'm not quite sure what I can, at least from the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna take the fenders off because they don't really attach to anything. We should be able to pop those off pretty easy. Then we can get an idea. I'm already 99% sure the battery is gonna have to be removed or the battery location rather. I already took the battery out, but I think all that's gonna have to go out of the way this side's a little more interesting because all my ac shit is right there so i don't know what we can remove and what we can't just yet but we need to get these fenders off here so we can get a better look and then we can see what's going on here is my inner fender right here that this is hitting but i don't it doesn't look like there's much room from there to that this side there's a bunch of room that side not so much so let's pop these fenders off we'll get a better idea So I know this front end wasn't great because somebody changed it out, but it looks like looks like this whole front support is held by zip ties. I think that's the second video in a row. My alarm has went off while recording. Good times. Uh, yeah, yeah, this whole front end looks like it's held on with zip ties. Uh, 
I... Yeah, I don't think there's anything else there. I don't know, I could be wrong. We'll probably go ahead and pop this off while we're here at this point, uh, because I gotta, I'm gonna mount a new bumper that I have. It kind, depending on where the bumper is, is how your lights fit. And I don't think my lights are gonna fit very good if this isn't actually bolted in. I don't know, maybe it, no, it, it definitely isn't. <laughs> Shit. So we might mess with that a little bit while we're in here. Damn. address it at some point <laughs> all right let's start seeing what we can rip out of this thing okay done some calculating and i'm still gonna trim some stuff because it just needs redone anyway a lot of this shit's just kind of hacked up i'm gonna jack it up pop the tires off and then see what we can get rid of and go from there but there's just no way to do it to get it as low as i want with these tires so i'm gonna call the tire shop tomorrow hopefully they have some smaller tires in these are I think 23560, which is pretty big, uh, you know, for a van. A van is essentially, this type of van is just a car. I mean, it's not really a van. <laughs> so I'm going to run a smaller car tire. And if I run like a 20550, I did a tire calculator, and I think that's going to drop it almost two and a half inches. So that's going to save us a bunch. Right now, with an airbag down, because as you can see, the, the back is still up, but the front's down, and you can see it's on... It's actually on the frame, you'd call it. It's not really a frame, but it's on there, and I'm at four inches off the ground. And I want it to lay all rocker because my rear end basically lays rocker. So I want to get that four inches down. And if I do the smaller tires, that's two and a half right there. So that'll take up a huge chunk. And then if we can get in here and cut out like another inch, that'll essentially get us on the ground. This side, I'm not worried about. This side, I am. I thought there was a space in between the AC and the inner fender, but there's really not. I mean, I can barely get my finger in there. So there's, I'm not gonna be able to cut out a lot in here. Now the good news is a lot of times these plastic pieces are way bigger than what is actually going on inside. I've known from cutting up chassis swaps. Even if you wanna keep the AC, a lot of times you can get rid of a lot of this plastic like an inch out of it. Now I don't know if that's the case with this one, but a lot of them, that's how they are. Sometimes the plastic is the actual casing though. And if you you know, if you cut a hole in it, you your air will go out that hole. That might be this style now that I'm looking at it, but I don't know. We're going to get to cut and see what happens. I don't even know if the AC works in this damn thing, so it might not be that big of a deal. I might throw the battery in and see if it even works because I'm not sure that it does. Uh, the way everything else is looking, I wouldn't expect it would. But I think all this should unbolt, but I'm not sure yet. So let's, uh, yeah, let's do all that. We're going to test the AC. And we're gonna get it jacked up and get these tires off. Let's go. All right, I got my battery box out. Threw the battery back in, tested it. None of the heat, none of the AC works. So I still wanna leave it there just in case, but if it gets in my way enough and pisses me off, we might yank that out. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna call my tire guy. Hopefully they have some in stock. I really don't wanna order tires because it'll take forever. But uh, yeah, this was a pretty good day. Really didn't think that uh, all this shit was held in with like four bolts, zip ties, and some sheet metal screws. <laughs> this actually bolted in because there's a big brace underneath it. It just didn't have any rubber bushings, which is not good. So we're going to fix that. And then I'd like to get the front end figured out, get tires changed out. Oh, I forgot I have to fix the, uh, forgot I have to adjust the tie rods because of the drop spindles. Now my wheels both point out. So I need to come in on that. I might do that too while I'm here. And I really want to get the front end put back on so we can get our bumper fitting and all that. And then we can start figuring out paint and stuff. But that's, that's a ways down the line. Cool. We'll be back tomorrow, baby. Took 
took an hour to get these freaking stupid lug nuts off. It's those ones that have, you know, Chevy did this shit in the 80s and 90s. It has a tin cover on it. And then whenever that tin rips off, like it always does, it turns into like a size that doesn't exist. It's in between a 19 millimeter and a 20 millimeter. So you got to take a 19 and just beat the shit out of it. And it sucks. <laughs> Took so long to get those off. I don't know why. Maybe they weren't tied before, but I, I had these wheels off before. It didn't seem like it was that big of a deal, but holy shit, it was this time. Finally got those off. I'm going to come in here and cut this up. I actually took the wheels off my CRX, which has the right size tires I need. Nobody in town has a small tire. I'm going to have to special order those, and I won't get them until next week, so I don't really want to do that. Well, I want to do that, but I still want to get it on the ground today so I can see what it looks like. So I'm going to take those off and have my CRX tires put on because they're little bitty guys. But I still want to cut this out because it's already rubbing, and... A smaller tire will help that a little bit, but I'm still going to hit up here. So basically I said all that to say, let's uh, get the plasma cutter out and try not to catch anything on fire. Holy crap, this was a giant pain in the ass. Ended up not using the plasma because I could basically get most of it with my Sawzall. We got a bunch of room up here. Cut basically the bottom out, but all my AC should still work, which is nice. I think even though these tires are too big, I think I'm going to throw them up there real quick just to kind of see where we're at because I'm curious more than anything. So let's do that real fast. All right, so I put the other wheels on that we had. They went down. It's actually hitting on the airbag mount because somebody put like a four inch bolt in there and you don't need that. You just need like a normal bolt. So I cut that down. I think I'm going to hit the frame next is what it looks like. But the good news is we were not running those tires. We got the tires off my CRX mounted. That is saving us a ton of room. Still looks pretty good though. I went ahead and ordered more for the rear. So we'll be super low in the rear. The reason I want to change them out in the rear is even though it's already low, it kind of hits some stuff because the tires kind of bubble out a little bit and it catches on the inner wheel well. I was going to try and cut all that out. If I just run these tires, it'll do away with all that. So that's going to be the way we're going to go. But I'm not going to get those till next Tuesday. But we do have the fronts done. Let's throw them on there and see what we're looking at. Hopefully that gets us on the ground. I'm almost certain it's gonna get the frame on the ground. <laughs> I don't know what we can do from there if the frame uh, does touch, but we'll see where we're at, let's go. Okay, it hit the cross member just like I thought it was going to, but it looked like my bags were all the way down and I think it wasn't gonna game anything. What I did was I put basically two inch spacers under both front wheels. Well, a, a hammer and a jack stand. But even with those under it, it still went all the way, I just about busted my ass. It still went all the way to the frame. Now right now the cross member's hitting, but barely. So that makes me believe that we can pancake the cross member a little bit. I didn't really wanna do all that. But with the new tires on, I'm still two inches, which is pretty damn low. But man, we've already went this far. Do we want to stop? I don't know. I'm 99% sure when I put those tires on the rear, the rear is going to be on the ground. Um, it's already really close anyway. So yeah, I think we're going to, I think we're going to pancake the cross member. And what that means is essentially, ugh, you just cut basically the bottom off of it right across here and you put a piece of flat plate and people do it all the time on low riders and hydraulic cars and stuff and that really gets you up because your cross member will hit anytime you're going super low your cross member usually hits first so yeah i didn't really want to have to cut it but i think i'm going to we're just already so far in it also um, I was pissed at first because I thought with these tires, I didn't need to cut out what I did <laughs> from the inner fenders. But after looking at where it was, it actually would have still hit. 
I had plenty of room up here. The problem was here. This corner would have would came all the way down like right there. So this corner would have still been hidden. So we might not have had to go as crazy as we did, but either way, we we're gonna have to get rid of this whole corner on both sides. So it's no big deal. Once you get rid of that corner, that's the floor. So either way, we were gonna be cutting the floor up. So it's not the end of the world, but uh, yeah, we probably could have cut it a lot less. <sighs> we do have the plasma cutter here. Mm, I'm gonna think about it. And the next video you watch is either gonna be me cutting the cross member out or working on something else. Cause I don't know yet what I wanna do. I'm probably gonna cut the cross member. That sucked. Naturally hit a brake line. I thought I pulled it far enough away. Nope, it was still right there on the cross member. Now, I've done this a handful of times. And in my experience, you never cut it all right the first time. <laughs> so I think I got, you know, I marked it, trimmed it, grinded it a little bit. I'm gonna jack the car up, put it back down and we'll see. But nine times out of 10, there'll be like a funky corner that just doesn't lay right. So you gotta trim it and grind it, but we'll see what happens. Let's put her down on the ground. Holy crap. Okay, so we got the cross member cut out, or just pancaked, we didn't cut it out. And that only dropped it like a half an inch. And now it's just not going all the way down. And I'm like, what, is it caught on something? And what it is, these bag brackets are way too tall. I knew that before, uh, but I thought it would still, you know, with the new spindles, I thought it would still be plenty low enough, but it's really not as low as it should be. So I think, Tomorrow, because I'm beat and I got cut dust all over me, there was like two inches of dirt <laughs> in that cross member. Tomorrow we're gonna come in and redo these bag brackets. They're a little funky anyway. I've been kind of wanting to do them anyway, but yeah, we're gonna have to because that's a problem. What I might do is take them out completely and let them go and see what they're running into. Sometimes they will hit the pocket or something like that, something that maybe I'm not seeing. I don't think that's what's happening, but I have a feeling that something like that is going on now. But the good news is, however low we want to go, our cross member, we have like another inch now because we took out about an inch and a half. It only dropped a half inch, though. This is all a lot of work for like, you know, just a little bit more. But we're already so far in at this point that uh, we're not going to stop now, obviously. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll come in, tweak these brag brackets and see what happens. I'd love to get that done. And then we can get the front clip back on and... Uh, you know, actually have a project that looks like a van again. Yeah, we'll, we'll hit it hard tomorrow. The next day. We are back. Today is the final day we have to work on this baby. So we're going to hit it really hard. We need to get it jacked up, get the bag cups out of there because they're way too tall. I knew that was an issue before. I probably should have started with that. But because we were already running into the inner fenders and we already having some weird like tie rod angle stuff, I knew the spindles needed to go in either way. So that's kind of the route I went. But if I was smart, I would have did spindles, then started messing with the bag mounts and then kind of figured the other stuff out. But hey, I'm an idiot and I like to do stuff ass backwards. Also, check this out. I got all new headlights and turn signals in today i ordered these about a week ago for the whole front clip because the original ones are kind of yellowing and kind of ugly oh yeah i think there's four of them here there's a top a bottom and then two corners if i remember right i got the whole kit i also have brand new tail lights coming but i don't think i'll get those today let's start hitting it hard baby let's get it jacked up and get those airbags out of there Okay, so this was a giant pain in the ass, getting the bags out of there, and then we realized there was a bunch of wonky shit going on. They actually had a pipe sitting on top of it. There it is right there. So this was actually sitting there, so whenever, whenever the bolt was tight, this would just rattle in there. I don't even know what the hell the point was. Maybe they were worried it was gonna go up too high. I don't know. Also, got to looking at it, the top of the bags, see all that? That is because they were sitting on the frame. 
They didn't cut the frame out enough for bag clearance. So I had to get in there and do that too. Holy crap, giant pain in the ass. Uh, we should be good now. I'm just letting it cool off. I put all this stuff back together. I have cut and trimmed every single thing possible. So wherever it's at now is where it's going to be. Hopefully it's low enough, but there's nothing else we can do at this point. So we just got to get him back in there and see what the hell it looks like. Woo! This took like four hours because so much stuff need trimmed and grinded. Oh, let's go. All right, currently it's all the way up. We might have went a little too low, not gonna lie to you. Wasn't expecting that to be the problem. Yeah, that's not great. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, good news is we can always run a bigger tire. We got baby tires on right now. Let's lay it out and see what it looks like. Uh oh! I don't even know what I'm hitting right now. Something's holding the body up. The frame is actually down. All right, let's jack it back up and see what it is. Damn it. All right, good news, bad news. Good news, we are 1.5 inches off the ground at the rocker panel. Bumper's basically on the ground. Front bumper might be on the ground by the time we get it done, which is great. Bad news, or good news, just how do you want to see it? It's currently the transmission cross member and the oil pan are basically on the ground. The oil pan has about that much. Transmission cross member is 100% on the ground. And I could technically cut that, but I'm not. That's going to be crazy to go that far. It was crazy to do what we've already done. But <laughs> some of that stuff we needed to do because our bags were going to rub on the frame either way. But we probably could have got away with not cutting the front cross member. I don't know. The cross, front cross member is about this high off the ground now. So I don't know. The good news is... Basically, I can run probably not that big of a tire, but I can run a lot bigger front tire and still have it laying way down, which is nice. What I'll probably do, maybe not in this video, but the next video is switch those around and see where that puts me, having the big tires back in the front. And what I'll most likely do is order a set of tires that's kind of in between these two. This is about as small as you can ever go on a 15, and that's pretty damn big for a 15 that's not a big truck tire so we definitely can play with that what we're going to do now start figuring out this front end it is a train wreck and i'd like to get it on there a lot better than it already is so let's get to going i completely understand now why this whole front end was held on with zip ties because of how far off everything is if you're not sure this is a 1985 van or 87 whatever it is and the front end is off like a 2000 van and they're kind of close but they're not that close you would think you know these spot welds got drilled off this van these spot welds got dripped off of this van put them together nope modern one is just a little bit longer so what you have to do is fit your fender on there first and then find out where this core support lands and it really doesn't land anywhere near this so what i did was put the fender on put a vice clamp on it and then just threw some sheet metal screws in it so i know everything lines up whenever i put my fenders back on so what i'm going to do now is add a piece of sheet metal here to tie all this back in because uh, we're not going to be going back uh, with zip ties i'm not going to go too crazy with it just yet since we're still fitting parts but i do want to get 
like a piece in here welded on both sides. And then we can keep going, kind of finding out where our hood is and whatnot. What I'm worried about is if we weld this and it's too high or too low and the hood is wrong, so then we're gonna have to raise it up, which would be a pain in the ass if this was all welded solid. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of put some pieces in there to hold it, because I don't want it falling forward or anything. And then we need to fit our bumper and whatnot. I have a brand new bumper for this. It's actually never been on. It's over there. So I put the new bumper reinforcement on, but not the bumper, so. Yeah, let's weld some shit and get going. It is getting late as hell. So let's roll. All right. Got the cowl welded, got the front fenders put on. I started changing out my headlights. That is a giant pain in the ass. Way harder than I thought it was gonna be. Just all the little screws and shit are so tiny. So we're gonna put a pin in that for now. I just wanna get the front end put on the rest of the way because I don't know what I'm gonna have to do to mount this bumper because nothing else matched up very good. So let's keep plugging along and see what we can get. This thing looks so much better now that the front clip is on it and everything's actually fitting right. I need to adjust my fenders in a little bit. I just found out this grill's broke though, so that's fun. Gotta order a new grill. I was like, why, why is there nothing that bolts down here? Oh, it's because it's all broke off. That's why nothing bolts down there. This should go. Oh, it's on the ground! It's on the ground, so I can't push it over it. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. Check it out. <laughs> Front bumper is on the ground so much that it's actually almost pulled the bumper off because all the weight is on that bottom lip. So I'll probably end up shaving that bottom lip a little bit. It's up about, I don't know, half inch too much now from the rocker because the bumper's dragging. But uh, damn, that's a cool looking van. I'm really happy with how this came out. We went a little too far with how much we cut, but we needed to dig in there anyway after we looked at uh, the jankiness that was going on with the front bags. Uh, but some of that I'm gonna end up putting back now. And I might run a little bit bigger bag mount on the bottom, because I cut, you know, like a half inch off. I can probably put that back to get it up a little bit more. But I'm gonna start playing with it with some different size tires and whatnot this week, and we'll see. But, man, I love it! Front bumper's dragging, rear bumper's dragging. Don't get much better than that. Now we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with paint and stuff. I got a brand new gas tank for it, but I am beat. It is, I think, 4.30 in the morning right now. So I'm going to bed. But I got a brand new gas tank for it so we can do away with our little temporary shit. It's gonna go back here behind the axle. Where is that gas tank? Uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh... Did I lose a brand new gas tank? Am I still rolling? Yeah, we're gonna look together. Oh shit. Oh shit. There it is. I knew she was around here somewhere. Got put up with all the damn Camaro parts that came in. That is really gonna clean up the back and a temporary tank is dangerous as hell, obviously. So we're gonna mess with that some on the next video as well. I am absolutely beat but I'm extremely happy with what we got done. I really like it. How are we gonna paint this thing? I think we have to just go crazy, full-blown lowrider paint style. <laughs> you know, like 80s van lowrider style. Cool, I'm beat. Man, I can't stop looking at it, I love it! I'm not the biggest Astro van guy, but that's pretty freaking cool. Front bumper dragon, rear bumper dragon, rocker panel, an inch off the ground. <laughs> 
cool. This thing is gonna be a ton of fun. Damn, she looked pretty. This video was an ungodly amount of work, but I am so happy to have it done. It just looks great. Very happy also to get the front end properly mounted. I knew it wasn't great before because it just had a lot of give in it. I did not know it was just held on with zip ties and basically a hope and a prayer. Uh, so that was nice to actually get that welded in and now everything is properly bolted the way it is. It's not going anywhere. Very, very nice to have that done. Now the bumper is gonna need some modifications because right now this whole front end of this car is held up by the bottom lip. So I'm gonna shave that down a little bit. That'll help it get down. But we actually did take a little too much metal out of it and it's lower than it needs to be now. So what I'm gonna do is probably put another bag mount in so it'll get the suspension up a little bit. And we're gonna end up running much more normal tire because that's a real little bitty guy. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go as big as what I have obviously, but kind of somewhere in the middle of those two. It'll get the rear end down a little bit more and it'll give me more room with the front end. Because right now with it aired all the way up, I only have like two inches of ground clearance from the frame which is not good, you know, you don't wanna, <laughs> whenever you hit a pothole, the thing that hits, you don't want it to be your frame. <laughs> You'd rather be something else. So we'll end up raising it a little bit, but it'll still be on the ground, if that makes any sense at all. We have a giveaway going on right now for my 1971 Ford F100. Go to caseyscustoms.com, you can get entered to win. If you are the winner, it includes free shipping in the lower 48 of the USA. You can win if you're outside of that region. You just have to figure out shipping. This. Ford truck is gonna be my 10th one, which is pretty cool that we've had nine cars given away to really happy people who got them for pretty dang cheap. All they had to do was buy a sticker and they got entered to win. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, go to caseyscustoms.com. It is the 71 F100 sticker. Buy it and you are entered to win. The sticker is real, it will show up. Uh, we just don't ship them super fast. We ship them snail mail. So sometimes they take a week, sometimes they take a month. So just be patient with me if you are waiting on the sticker. And we will do the giveaway whenever that fills up. I've had them fill up in two days, I've had them fill up in two weeks. So it's just kind of somewhere in there whenever it fills up. I'll make posts about it and whatnot. So if you want to do that, caseycustom.com. We also have some of the coolest merchandise on the planet there. If you want to go buy some merch while you're at the store, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good shit they tell you at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace! I love you.